This is one of those clinical conundrums that uh, I didn't really have good literature or evidence to support or refute. But I remember um, starting at my new shop in the community, and we would have patients with increased intracranial pressure, and we typically give 3%. And there was always this statement that, well, the way we've always done it is it has to go through a central line. Um, it's hospital policy. When I got up to the ICU, it was the same thing. And so I finally just had to look this up and decide if this is something that this is the way we've always done it. There's actually literature to support or refute that. So that's where this talk kind of came from. Now, there's a couple of things on this slide that I kind of want to point out. So first of all, when we talk about 3% hypertonic saline, we're talking about 1,000 milliosms. And we know that serum or plasma is about 300 milliosms. And we freak out about this medication going through a peripheral IV, yet how many people have given amps of sodium bicarb? How many milliosms an amp of 8.4% sodium bicarb is? 1,000. Like 6% saline. We give that without blinking an eye, and yet we like completely freak out about giving 3%, which is half the osmolarity through a peripheral IV. Central line. If you haven't had a complication from a central line, you just simply haven't done enough of them. Um, because every procedure has innate potential complications that can occur with it. And I think most of us can agree, line infection, line thrombosis, pneumothorax, bleeding, these are all not benign things that could potentially happen from a central venous catheter. And so are we talking about extravasation of 3% or are we talking about potential complication from a central line? So you've got to kind of weigh these potential complications. And then the final thing is, is if I have a patient with elevated or increased intracranial pressure, my goal is to drop that pressure as quickly as I can. And there are delays sometimes, especially when you're working down in the ER and having to see multiple patients so you can get that central line in. Are we just going to allow that, that intracranial pressure to remain high or are we going to actually do something to treat it? I just want you to kind of keep all these things in mind as we're talking about this or if somebody comes back and tells you like, you're crazy for giving that through a peripheral IV. So I didn't get a lot of votes on this poll, but I basically asked the question, if you have a patient with elevated intracranial pressure, which of the following would you do? And there's essentially two answers built into this. One is, do you bolus your 3% or do you do it as an infusion? And then the second, which is, we're gonna answer both these questions by the way, is do you do it through a central line or do, do you do it through a peripheral IV? And you can see of the 14 people that voted, the most common answer was, I do it as a bolus through a peripheral IV, which was like music to my ears. So this paper was just published in Neurocritical Care February of this year. And it's basically a single center study that basically they said, we just are gonna give our 3% as a bolus through a peripheral IV. And then we're gonna document how effective that is and how safe that is, okay? And so this is their clinical question. Is giving a bolus of 3% through a peripheral IV, is it both safe and is it effective? Now, retrospective, single center, descriptive, it's basically like, look at this cool thing we did and now we're gonna just report to you like what our results are. So again, there's no comparator, right? They're not comparing to a central line. They're not comparing to anything else. They're just saying, this is what we started doing. And the, their definition of bolus was 3% on a pump at 999 per hour through an 18 or a 20 gauge peripheral IV. And then they just recorded the number of complications that they had and then the effect on the intracranial pressure. They did 216 boluses of 3% in 124 patients. I don't think it takes a genius to realize that that means some patients got multiple boluses of 3%. Um, and then the most common things are pretty typical of what we would see, intracranial uh, hemorrhage, acute ischemic stroke, traumatic brain injury. Um, and then what was interesting is a third of these patients got both. They got 3% and they got mannitol. And we'll talk about that here in just a second. So when you look at the number of patients that had a potential complication or a documented complication from giving 3% as a bolus through a peripheral IV, it was eight patients, 3.7% of the infusions. 
Now let's go through these one at a time. The maths, I dropped an S on that, don't add up because some patients can have multiple complications. So pain at the injection site. Okay, you guys tell me, what's worse, herniating your brain or having some pain at an injection site? Okay, so we can agree that that's not really a complication. Thrombophlebitis. You can get thrombophlebitis from any peripheral IV, regardless of what you run through it, okay? Y'all know what the treatment for thrombophlebitis is? It's usually warm compresses and NSAIDs, right? Like, it's just, there's nothing else to do. Vein thrombosis. We're talking about very tiny veins. The treatment, at worst, maybe a short course of anticoagulation, but otherwise, it's going to be antiplatelets and warm compresses as well. And then extravasation. There was nothing that was severe. Nobody had a skin graft. Nobody got necrosis of a digit or uh, an extremity. Nobody got hypotension. Like, nobody died. So again, when we're talking about, oh, you absolutely cannot give this through a peripheral IV, what are we really talking about when we compare it to these as the complications? They're not only are they rare, but they're also like minor in comparison to basically being neurologically devastated for the rest of your life. Oh, when we look at intracranial uh, pressure reduction, for the ones that they where they included the entire cohort, which included the ones that also got mannitol. You can see that you dropped intracranial pressure by about five millimeters of mercury. And then when you excluded the, that one third with mannitol, it was about six. So can we say it's anywhere from like five to six in terms of decrease in intracranial pressure, regardless of whether you gave them mannitol or not? Now, the reason I like this study and the reason it's not because it's new and it's not because it's on the ladder of evidence-based medicine, it's super high. Good luck finding a randomized clinical trial that compares peripheral versus central. But when you look at previous literature, you can't look at studies in a bubble. You have to see where they kind of fall in regards to the rest of literature. Now, the problem with previous literature on this topic is a lot of times it was like low infusion rates. Like they weren't doing boluses. They were just giving infusions of like 50 to 100 mLs per hour. The infusion times were prolonged. They were like over six hours. This was 999 over an hour, which means most of the people were getting their dose within 15 minutes. And then infusion-related complications, anywhere from 2.9 to 10.7%. And so this study was about 3.7%. That jives with what previous history shows. It falls within the range of what you would expect to see. Now, this bolus versus continuous infusion. I'm a bolus guy. Um, I don't know how many people do infusions, but bolus is the way to go. And this study was published in Critical Care Medicine in January of 2024. And basically, it was a single center retrospective study, and they just not randomized. They looked at people they gave boluses to compared to people that they just did infusions with. It was 90 patients, and look at these results. Bolus compared to infusion. Goal sodium achieved within two, like basically three hours versus 15 hours. We're talking about a neurologic emergency here. Three hours versus 15 hours is not insignificant. Volume received, 750 mLs with the bolus versus 2,500 mLs with the infusion. That is a huge amount of 3% saline to infuse in somebody. Sodium goal at 72 hours basically being achieved, 83% versus 56%. So for me, there's no question here. It is if you're going to give it, give it through a peripheral IV. Central venous catheters are not a benign intervention. This is a neurologic emergency that we don't need to delay waiting for a central line. The complications that occur are typically very minor in regards to the neurologic emergency. And for the love of God, if you're going to give 3%, give it as a bolus and not a slow infusion. All right, guys, that's what I got for you. Hopefully that was a little bit salty. And the next to last talk of the morning. Thank you again.